we're back in the shop with our Lexus for a quick test tip using your multimeter to test relays. With the underhood relay panel removed, remember we have a great breakdown of the location of the various relays and components. A couple tests I want to show you very quickly is that a lot of these relays are interchangeable. So if I prop my relay panel up here, I'm going to take out the EFI relay like I did previously in our charging system test video. I'm going to carefully wiggle that sucker until it comes out. I'll crank over the engine and you'll notice that it will crank over, but it will not start. If I had this situation and I thought I maybe had a relay that was malfunctioning, I could just do a quick relay switch. According to the panel, the horn relay is located close to the EFI relay and they have the same terminals and configuration. So I'll switch them now. Same number of terminals, same configuration. In fact, let's zoom in on these. Okay, what you'll notice about both relays is that they have two copper terminals and then two silver terminals, right? The silver smaller blade terminals go to the control circuit of the relay. The larger copper terminals, those go to the switch circuit. They're exactly the same configuration, same part numbers. I'm going to go ahead and put this horn relay inside the EFI relay's location. If my vehicle was a no start, if the relay was the fault, and I tested the horn and I knew the horn worked, I could then switch relays. This vehicle should sh start now. It starts, which tells us that that horn relay worked just fine in its location. If the vehicle was not starting before, then I just diagnosed a defective relay. Let's look at another way we can test that relay. Okay, with the relay connected to my meter and my meter set to measure ohms, you can see that this relay's control circuit has a resistance value of 114.6 ohms. I could compare that to specification. In this case, the control circuit of this relay is fine. However, this does not test the switch side of the relay. Now I've set the meter to measure volts and I have the open location where the horn relay was. I'm going to see if it has power at all the appropriate spots. So I'm going to leave one alligator clip on and this one's just going to go straight to the negative battery terminal. This other terminal I'm going to use to carefully probe and test the relay connection. So I can see on the switch circuit I have 12.75 volts going to the switch side. My control circuit has 12.75 volts going to it. So I have power on both terminals that should have power on them. Do I have ground on the other terminals? Well, we'll have to change our meter connections to see. To do that, I'm going to switch things around. I'm going to put this probe on the positive post, and I'm now going to put this probe on the negative post. If I push the horn button with this probe in that location, I should see a reading come up on my screen. Be careful not to damage your electrical terminals when you probe these connectors. Sometimes you need to take a smaller pin, perhaps a small paper clip or a T-pin to make a better electrical connection without dis disfiguring the terminal that's built into your fuse panel.
So now I'm going to push on the horn button. The horn won't turn on, but it should cause the control circuit of the relay to close, and we should see 12 volts come up on my meter when I push the horn down. And we do. So there's 11, 12 volts. That tells us the control side of our electrical circuit is working. Now we can test the switch side of the circuit and have a little fun measuring the current flow through our relay. We know from our previous test that this terminal here has 12 volts on it. That means the other terminal there should go to the horns. If I connect my meter leads between that terminal and ground, and I set my meter to measure ohms, I should see some resistance there. And there we have it, 1.5 ohms. That's the resistance of the horns themselves. If I wanted to make sure the horns actually functioned and not just had continuity, I could use my multimeter set to ohms and actually flow some current through there. Now, horns don't take more than 10 amps, so this should be safe to do with my multimeter. To do that, what I'm going to do, take the positive probe, I'm going to go to the positive battery terminal. I'm going to move this probe to the amps location and move my meter to measure DC amps. I'm on a 5 amp scale right there. Let's test out the horn. You can see when I did that, the horn came on and it measured just under 5 amps. We'll do it one more time and try not to drive our neighbors nuts. So what we've done with our meter is we've moved it to measure current flow. The current actually flows through the meter we can measure the amp flow, and we bypass the relay and its control circuit and function our horns. At this point, we know that this electrical circuit completely works for both the control circuit side and the switch circuit side. And if the horns really did not work on this car, then I'd be seeking to replace the relay. Again, a faster way to diagnose this problem might have been just to switch over this relay and put it in that location if we knew this relay functioned correctly to test our relay to, for proper functionality. I hope this tech tip helps you with further relay testing.